to Patterson, Marshall, Walsh and Hooper. As well, the man of the match was Michael Atherton. We'll have a word with The you. highlights of the second one-day international in the Texaco series, England against the West Indies. England won up, of course, before this match, after that marvellous win at Edgbaston on Friday. Well, the weather was a key concern here after the tale of bad light earlier in the week, and we had a reasonable forecast. It was cloudy but fine, but we had a full house, and we had some splendid cricket in the offing. There were team changes for England, at least one. Ian Botham was out, forced out by that hamstring injury, and in came Mark Ramprakash for his first taste of international cricket. West Indies were unchanged, but with a big query over their bowlers, would they concede this time 43 extras? Well, the West Indies won the toss, and they put England into bat. We'll join now the second ball of the fourth over. The score is seven for no wicket. Patterson is bowling to Gooch. That is the one place, or one of the places, where you don't want to bowl to Graham Gooch. He's very powerful off his pads. Here's Ambrose. Beaten Richardson, and it'll beat Marshall down uh, at the third man boundary. Almost looked as though it came off the queue end. Keen eye. Oh, Nimley, that was through everything and probably very adjacent to the top of off and middle. Or buys it is. He's gone for it. Love, I think that's one, not the bat. Yeah. That's a good shot. Worth a couple. Again, the big point about his technique beautifully sideways on footwork, absolutely copybook. Well, a wide signal, but a terrific take from Geoffrey Dujon. He did one of these yesterday morning, which saved four byes at a crucial stage. Yes, and in fact, this doesn't start that wide. When you see it pitch, it actually pitches middle stump, but it's short. And it went a long way off the scene. One of the few that has moved off the scene here today. That's a good shot. Almost Caribbean style there. Fifty up, and a new bat is required. Big shot there, but I think it might have been swinging too sharply. Oh, right through him. Right through him. And a nod from Graham Gooch to say, well, that beat me all ends up. How the wickets are standing, I've got no idea. Yes, apart from anything else, that must have been very, very close to bowling him. Courtney Walsh. Oh. No ball was called. It's high in the air. Oh! <laughs> I really don't know how to describe that. Did a bit of a pantomime, really.
West Indies needed a young man out there like Hooper. Well, that's a good way out of it. I think it, it almost decided beforehand that if it was up, it was going. He's very conscious of the state the team is in. Not just uh, Graham in his own form, but the team needs to be moving on a bit. That's flashed away over Richard's head at Gully. It's in uh, more of a backward point position, but still available for the catch. And that went at catchable height, but very fast. piece of feeling there by Hooper and uh, there's also a very fine piece of running. They really have to run quickly there. You see that very often. Well, this is where the chance was if he gathered it clean. 50 for Michael Atherton, following on his man of the match at Edgebaston and the super innings down there. Another good one today, different context, but uh, some excellent batting. We, uh, around about two overs to go, we get another one from Simmons, one more from Hooper. Oh, that's a beautiful stroke. Judged it perfectly because there's no man uh, square of the wicket on the offside, out on the boundary. That's a beautiful stroke. Four wides and no ball, and uh, none for 30 for Phil Simmons, Michael Atherton and Graham Gooch have put on 139 in the opening stand here at Old Trafford. And Prime Minister John Major in the dressing room. Graham Hick getting out of his flak jacket. Oh, is he out? They claim it and they're also confident. Dickie Bird says no. Atherton stays. Well, he obviously got fairly close to it, but uh, Michael Atherton didn't think he'd hit it. And more importantly, neither did the umpire. Ooh, that was well fielded. Good call, too, by Graham Gooch, who simply said no, but he said it quickly as... has reached his highest score in one day internationals. That's Gordon That's Greenwich. Gordon. Yeah, Gordon Greenwich, which uh, it was noticeable he didn't chase after that at all. And it looks as though he might have gone in the knee. That's certainly a bit of a blow for the West Indies because although Gordon Greenwich hasn't been in great form with the bat, with uh, Desmond Haynes injured as well. It really leaves uh, a bit of a gate in the West Indian batting. And that's young Brian Lara who has come onto the field as substitute fielder. This is Carl Hooper. It's bowled him and Gooch is gone. Just difficult the first instant there to see whether the ball would come back off Dujon or whether Gooch had in fact been broke. Well, it's time to play that sort of shot, give himself room. Very fine innings, a partnership of 156 ends, and Graham Gooch has 54. 
great expectations of Graham Hick, who scored, scored over 50 first-class centuries, and yet the fear is that too much is expected of him. And really, that's not the sort of shot you want to play when you come in first of all. You want to play with the face of the bat. That's in the air, and it's out. Caught by the substitute fielder, Brian Lara. So Gooch and Atherton can go together, so to speak. 156 for two. Two wickets fall on the same score. Yes, uh, Michael Atherton getting a little bit tucked up with the hook shot there. And Brian Lara judging that beautifully. some applause for Mike Atherton on his home ground. Aaron Lamb. There's a nice shot from Lamb. No slip. Well, Lamb trying a little shimmy getting something onto it and it's four runs just watch the uh, the preliminary footwork of Alan Lamb here before he actually made contact and uh, that was a bad ball very similar to the one in fact which uh, sealed the first match at Edgbaston yesterday short outside off stump and that is the trap into which the more inexperienced bowler sometimes falls you've got to bowl a full length you've got to bowl straight Patrick Patterson, he bowled well at the start. Well, that's the best place to put it. In fact, he was aiming uh, roughly square leg, and it's gone 90 degrees spell over top of him. Malcolm Marshall back in the attack. Might be four more. And is. That's the place to put them. If you haven't got a slip, you can't complain. Takes Hick in the double figures. Also brings up the 200. cricket here magnificent square cut from Graham Hick and West Indian fielder coming round there picking it up and straight in there and Hick just had good running that's uh, good shot now Lara will have his work cut out getting to that. Well, that's the best shot we've seen today. And this is the man we know. the end of the innings they're just a bit uh, over pitched today sometimes the batsman can't take advantage of it particularly on a dull day 
opportunity. That was some shot. It almost decapitated Kirtley Ambrose. It's brought up Alan Amps 50. Graham Hick is 25. There's still plenty of batting to come, but only five overs. from Alan Lamb. No ball call. I'll take the run for it anyway because Hick was on his way. A great century partnership here between this pair. Hick and Lamb. They came together at... Uh, 156 for two. Lamy is giving it a little bit of a limp there, and I'm not surprised that Sanchu Crusher is uh, going to be painful on any sort of day, let alone one where it's so chilly. He's given it a high two and a half. And uh, the inside edge was probably not worth much more than that. Graham Hick trying to hit this square on the offside. And just getting an inside edge and dragging it back in. But uh, good innings by him. It will give him a little bit of confidence. He's been under enormous pressure. And... Uh, Good 29 runs. It's uh, 258 for three, but of more significance is the fact that we're into the 53rd over. Uh, there's not much time left for uh, Neil Fairbrother to make any impact. He'll have to fling the bat. And Lamb's gone. Top edge, a good catch. That was a certain four if Dujon hadn't gone up um, a bit like an Australian rules footballer and taken the catch. That's 260 for four now. And Alan Lamb throwing the bat at everything. Just got a very fine top edge and a brilliant catch by Dujon. He's kept extremely well. But that was a wonderful innings by Alan Lamb at exactly the right time. After a fine opening partnership, he's come in and really plundered the West Indian attack. is the end of the England innings. A tremendous performance. Two century partnerships there. Gooch and Atherton putting on 156 and Lamb and Hick 102. Lamb really was excellent. 62 runs off 50 balls. As for the West Indies bowling, well, a bit of stick flying around, I'm afraid, for some, but Ambrose, the most economical, two wickets for 36 and Patrick Patterson, one for 39. So West Indies have to get 271 runs to win and the rate required 4.93 per over. Now Lamb's unable to field, Dermot Reeves substitutes, Greenwich can't open the batting, Dujon substitutes. We'll join the West Indies run chase now, the second ball of the second over, Lewis is bowling to Dujon and there's no score. And that's Geoffrey Dujon at his best. One of the handsomest stroke players in world cricket. Chris Lewis. Oh, yeah. Didn't quite get it, but... Um, an extremely good shot. All wrists. Well, there we are. That'll be... Uh, 
a relief for him. He needed it. Well, this has been a loose over, but ending with a wicket. A terrific catch there by Philip De Freitas, and what a way to end probably the worst over of the innings. Great running catch. Everyone being in players over there. Jeffrey Dujon goes caught by De Freitas. And lovely innings of 21. The West Indies, 34 for one. Uh, quite remarkable. See Dujon laying back a little bit. He hit that right off the face of the bat. On the up and beautifully judged catch that by Philip De Freitas. Now, Richie Richardson, and if ever there's a West Indies batsman who loves to cut and carve a way around off stump, it's him. Well, that's a very fine shot there, but good feeling by Rampakash on the boundary. And a good return. 50 came up off 98 deliveries. That compares with 110 for England. Richardson looking for two. Oh, that's wonderful running. Really is. He forced the error. It was a just a very sharp two at very best, but. Uh, Oh, there's a run out here. Must be. Well, well, well. What a way for Phil Simmons to go. Run out for 27. Whatever chances he got of getting back were completely ruined when he slipped anyway. Disconsolate. Simmons on his way. It was a misfield in the first place. And he looked for a two, which really was always going to be tight. Yes, after the misfield by Chris Lewis here, fine pickup by Graham Hick, really pinning that ball back in, great return, and Russell not panicking, just rolling the ball back down the wicket, plenty of time, the batsman yards out. Carl Hooper. That's the sort of shot that Richardson is fond of as um, England's fifth bowler oh and he's got a wicket he's got a wicket first ball and it's Richardson that's the one they wanted caught at the wicket too close to cut Richardson goes and now West Indies in trouble at 69 for three Breeze is just like right for Graham Gooch coming from that end. It's going from fine leg. He'll be able to get a little bit of a way swing, which I think this did. Yes, there you see it just going away from the bat and possibly just bounce a little bit high on Richardson as well. He's annoyed with himself there, but it wasn't a bad delivery. It just went away and bounced a little. And there goes one great attacking player, replaced by another one. And there he is. And that's the first boundary for Viv Richards, and uh, if that's going to set him alight well, that's exactly what West Indies need. Both batsmen at one end. My word, there's been some pretty sloppy cricket from West Indies today. A hatful of nobles and wides again. One run out already, and that could well have been another. Rudo Villingworth's 11 overs. And again, that very strong arm. 100 up. That's good stroke, nicely placed. 
kept it away from the man at square point also from the one at uh, backward point that's a more expensive over and that's what West Indies need they've got to score that number of runs nine from uh, most of the overs from now on 11 overs one made and none for 42 Oh, that's a beautiful shot. And Hooper, really, when he plays those sort of shots, you can see why so much is thought of him. There he goes. He didn't really get it, but uh, he got it far enough. Even Pringle couldn't catch that. which is ninth over. Again, that run rate is, hasn't increased in the last five or six overs. Could be the start of uh, something big for Vivian Richards. Gooch is uh, changing his field now. He's pulling the man uh, a little bit squarer. That's where it's gone, but unfortunately for uh, Ramprakash, it's gone right over his head. And this is a tremendous hit. Good length ball, but just drifting down the leg side. And beautifully timed, right into the pivot. Great running. 40-year-old Richards has hit it to uh, the young player who's been racing in from square leg. He's beaten the throw and up comes his half century. Now it's uh, going to be Lewis again to Richards. Don't even bother looking. Don't bother jumping either. They put Fair Brother there, but uh, even Curtly Ambrose wouldn't have touched that. And in fact, he didn't really middle it. Put it a little bit low on the back, but it still cleared square leg. got themselves into uh, a very sensible position particularly if Vivian Richards keeps playing strokes of that quality oh he's gone and a good catch Reeve has snapped it up but went at a terrific bat and he took it beautifully at backward point. Well, it was a cracking shot. He hit it right off the middle of the bat. Short outside the off stump, and he really timed it beautifully. Straight at Reed. And it was going like a bullet. Straight in. Very good innings by Hooper. Played some lovely strokes. A very talented player indeed. And he's, along with his captain, has put West Indies in with a chance here. Oh, now that is a terrific shot. West Indies, you've always had the feeling they're just one good over away from being right in the thick of this game, and uh, who knows, this could be it. And if they're over. That's out, had to be. Walked across to work it, and almost started to walk before the finger went up. And there is reward for Lewis. 
all of his England mates in there in the end of a fine innings from Richard. He paced it well. Ball was just a little out of reach, one felt the target, and eventually he took one risk too many. LBW for 78. A crucial wicket. There's the reception. Yes, I think they've almost walked for this. It's not what can do for an LBW, but there you can see the reason why. Fine innings. Just wanted one more good over, a 15-20 over, and we're in the real chance. But certainly a fine captain's innings. New batsman, Malcolm Marshall. This is where the absence of Greenwich is uh, proving crucial. Ninth over. Well, that's in Malcolm Marshall's area, I tell you. He loves to go offside, and six of them. Well, that was as outrageous a shot as we saw from Courtney Walsh the other day at Edgbaston. That was a tremendous shot. Yes, this carries five rows back into the crowd over extra cover. Left foot six inches outside leg stump. Doesn't make any difference to Mr. Marshall. And all goes over extra cover. That's gone for four. Dermot Reeve had a full length crack at it at Gully. Couldn't get to it and uh, ran for cash out on the square point boundary. Got no chance at all. And the full task, this one's gone. That's four runs. The freight is desperately trying to just keep the ball up and not give the batsman any room at all, but that just overcooked it. Yes, and uh, Logie is very strong on the onside, and that's where the big gaps are. Let's carve that away, there'll be more than one. Lewis onto it. 11 off the over. It's just about kept. Oh, and they've got an overthrow. 12 off the over. Just about keeps West Indies in touch. Just about. 22 needed, 12 deliveries. And that might be out. Filling with underneath it and catches it. And there we are. The end of Logie. Pringle gets the benefit. Pringle gets the benefit from pitching the ball well up. Full toss length, and this was the result. Well, you've got to try and keep it up. In fact, it wasn't a good delivery, and at the finish, he was probably looking to get away without giving a four and over that mid wicket boundary. But you're always better with the ball pitched up than short. Just juggling about a bit there, but Richard dealing with at the finish, judging it pretty well and getting in front of his chest. Well, we wondered who would be next man in. Now we've got drama, as if we haven't got enough in the helter-skelter of a one-day finish, we've got a runner, Gordon Greenwich. He's smiling, not when the other people are. This might be another one. Caught and bowl, Pringles underneath it, and he's caught it, so two in two. First Logie, then Marshall. One man's turning the game, then it's Derek Pringle. And so often with Essex has done this sort of valuable job for Graham Gooch. This is why Gooch has trusted him. He bowls it straight, he bowls it full length. They are a bit of a cutter, and his bat was way through it before the ball arrived. Pringle making sure he was out of the way of the batsman. Thank you very much. Can be out, can be out. Pringle thought he'd got his man, instead of which a leg by.
Yeah, well bowled. He's up there. Yeah, it's got to be very, very close. Philip De Freitas to defend that. Just be one, so uh, not quite game set and match, but all but. And out. <laughs> as low key a piece of cricket as you could find, the six wanted and run out going for a single bye. Go down well with Gordon Greenwich's one day record. Well, not a lot of intelligence here. Took them a long time to decide to even go for a run. And by the time they went for one, I, I was surprised that Jack Russell releasing the ball because he could have beaten him to the wicket quite easily. Well, that's signing off with a little bit of a flourish. Reduces the winning margin. Takes the score to 2 6 1. So England win by nine runs, and in so doing, a second successive victory with David Lawrence, Alan Lamb, Ian Botham, and shakes all round. And Graham Gooch did a good job, both as captain and bowler and batsman. So let's review the West Indies effort there. Lots of mini innings, but a tremendous effort in the middle by Vivian Richards and Carl Hooper. They put on 121 for the fourth wicket. But England very much on top, good catching, good ground fielding, and some tight bowling too. But really only Richard Illingworth was economical, conceding 42 runs off his 11 overs. Crucial wickets, however, taken by Derek Pringle and Chris Lewis. Result then, a nine-run win for England, and of course they take the Texaco Trophy. That will be presented at the third match in the series at Lords on Monday. Up on the balcony, Graham Gooch received the winning captain's cheque from Mr. Roger Collum, the managing director of Texaco. And David Lloyd, formerly of Lancashire and England, chose his man of the match. It was Alan Lamb. 